It is a very painful thing to remember Asaba Masaka. Asaba Masaka, seeking healing. A lot of Nigerians don't know what thing happened. 7th October 1967, a lot of atrocities happened in the land of Asaba. Nigerian soldiers committed a lot of atrocities. Anya Mohon Anya Bianagi say, Nong Dimitis. That is goodbye till we meet no more. During the Afro War, Nigerian soldiers gathered all the male child and adults in Asaba and massacred them all. They killed many, many people. They killed the both adults, all the male child for inside Asaba. 1970. Anya Biakaije Zutande Aya, Nigeria. Biabulegu. Anya Maranobo. A game of death, Kaiba Nimia. In the members of Asaba Massacre, on the 7th October 2022, we'll be sitting at home in entire Biafra land. On that day, it is expected that all schools, all markets, all churches, all banks will shut down for the remembrance of Asaba Massacre. Anybody will hear my voice making talk to a brother, making talk to a sister, making one in children, making one everybody. Where they close to them, this order is coming from Biafra spokesperson Simon Epa. Asina, Nti Adhari, Ebubisi, Isse Soroya, it means any year, when they hear what as they cut ahead, and as they go cut in here, full arm. They open fire. Pa 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 pa. We will go machine gun. Gahube our people, and they were slaughtered in thousands. Welcome, my amazing viewers. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are joining from. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining my broadcast. Wherever you are joining from, I appreciate you. Any place you are connecting from, if you are joining me from Biafra land, you are joining me from the zoo, you are joining from any part of Africa, you are joining from Asia, from Europe, from America, from Australia, from Canada, from New Zealand. I appreciate you and I say may Chukukabiam continue to guide you, protect you, and secure you. Wherever you are connecting from, I thank you so much for joining. Any place you are joining from, may Chukukabiam and protect you. More especially, my brothers and sisters who are joining from Biafra land, I appreciate you and I say may Chukukabiam continue to guide you, protect you, and secure you. Today, we have come once again to speak on issues that concerns us Biafrans. As always, I always come here to encourage my fellow Biafrans to tell Biafrans the way forward and to make my suggestions and contributions to the coming of Biafra in 2023. My purpose of coming here is not to gossip not to attack anybody or not to blackmail anybody, but to encourage my fellow Biafrans and let them know that it is very essential that we must stand firm and be steadfast in whatever we are doing. No looking back, forward ever and backward never. And I also have to point out on some reasons why we must do what we are doing. Whatever you see the agitators, the genuine agitators, the autopiloted IPOB, what they are doing today, they have a reason for doing it. And for the records, if you're on this very platform and you're watching me, have it at the back of your mind that you are watching an autopiloted platform. Autopiloted platform, autopiloted by Chukwu Gabiyama, under the spokesmanship of Mazi Simon Emba and on the leadership of Mazi Nandika. That is where I stand and nothing can change it. As long as we continue to stand on the truth, I go for the truth and nothing else. The truth and nothing but the truth. 
and very, very consistent, as Mazen Nandekano has always said, that consistency is the key. From the onset, when I started speaking out about the Biafran struggle, I have been consistent and saying what I'm saying. It's all about the truth. You don't need to struggle about it. You don't need to begin to break your head about it, what to say or what to do, if you are standing on the truth. As long as you're standing on the truth and focusing on the truth and telling the truth, you don't need to break your head or think of what to say. You don't need to trouble yourself. The only people who are facing challenges, who are dancing from pillar to pole, are those who are not truthful. Once you are not truthful, once you have told one lie, you are going to need a thousands of lies to continue to keep that lie that you have told. If you have told a single lie, you have told a single lie, you need a thousand lies to protect one single lie that you have told in the past. But if you are standing on truth, you are going to be consistent and nobody's going to shake you. That is why today, we that are standing on the autopiloted movement by Chukukabia, we stand on the truth and nothing but the truth. And today, once again, I've come to let you know why we must do what we are doing. Why Biafrans must fight for their independence. Why Biafran must fight and try as much as possible to cry and try to disintegrate the Zoological Republic. Why we are bent on having Biafra depredation by 2023. It is a divine mandate and there's no going back. I am going to play some videos from our Supreme Amazon Nandekano to support today's broadcast. Because these days, we need the word from Mazen Nandekano for you to believe what we are saying and why we are doing what we are doing. Because most of the time, we are so forgetful. We are so forgetful. Black people are so forgetful. Mainly our fellow Biafrans, we are so forgetful that we forget easily. And that is why history keeps repeating itself. Because we are forgetful. In the Zoological Republic, indigenous people, indigenous tribe in that contraption called Nigeria, they are so forgetful. That is why history keeps on repeating itself. It is very essential that we come online and take you back to history. It is very essential that we come around, around to pick your mind, to touch your heart once again, to refer you back to what you have forgotten. That is why it is necessary that we come online on daily basis to speak. It is not necessary to come and beg you to join Biafra or beg you to do anything. No. Biafra will come. Just as much as Nandi can have said, it doesn't matter whether you support Biafra or you don't support Biafra. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or you don't believe it. The mandate of Chukwu Bukabiyama is that Biafra will come. And that time appointed for the coming of Biafra has come. I thank Chukwu Bukabiyama that the autopiloted movement of Chukwu Bukabiyama called IPO, the original IPOB, original IPOB formed by Mazen Nandekan, autopiloted by Chukwu Bukabiyama. They are mindful of time and they are following the time of Chukwu Bukabiyama. Following the timing, as Chukwu Bukabiyama has made it that 2023 we are going for. Mazen Nandi can have prophesied about it for a very long time. I played the video here several times. We are Mazen Nandi can said it. That before 2023, that the zoo will be destroyed. And that tells that we are going home in 2023. And when our brother Simon Eber, the spokesperson of Biafra, said the same thing, people got mad. Those who never even believed Mazen Nandi can for the day, those who were making sure that Mazen Nandi can never succeed in this struggle. They got angry, they got mad, they got confused. They start coming out from all their shelves and begin to talk trash. But do we care? We don't care. We don't give a damn for what anybody is saying. All we are asking for is our freedom. And that freedom we must get by fire, by force. We have cried, we have begged, we have shouted, we have appealed to the world. Everybody have heard it with all evidence to the United Nations and to the Amnesty International. Yes, they kept silent. And today, we have activated a full-time armed struggle to rescue Biafra. And we are not just doing it. Why we are doing it? We are sensitizing our fellow Biafrans for them to know the time that we're in so that you don't get yourself into trouble. It is a very sensitive time. We are in a very sensitive time. You have to be security conscious any place you go. Pay attention to the environment. We are not part of election. We are not seeking for any Igbo presidency or any Biafra presidency or whatever presidency at all. We're not seeking for any post. We are not seeking for resource control. Neither are we seeking for anything or asking for any marginalization issue. No, we want to save our life. 
and our situation in the Zoological Republic is a situation that is about to take the life of the Biafrans. And for that, we will do everything possible to save our life. That is where we are today. And no man, one of a woman, can change it because it is the mandate of Chukwu Kabiyam. We did not just wake up to begin to fight for Biafra. We did not just begin to wake up and talk about the armed struggle. We have cried enough. If every one of you can remember, even with your short memory, you can remember, for a very long time, Mazin Nani can have been preaching for more than a decade, talking about Biafra. All he has is a microphone. All he has is a microphone and the truth. And with that, he was able to sensitize all the Biafrans. We stood awake. All that indigenous tribe in the Israeli Republic, including the Odudu brothers, they woke up and they were ready to go. The middle birds, they woke up. Including some politicians, they began to speak up. They are no longer cowards. They speak up. What are we going to stop them? We can't stop them because we are dealing with a stubborn pharaoh. A stubborn pharaoh that will never let the people go. Those that we are doing. So we are going to apply all measures possible. Every measure at our reach, we are going to apply it. Then allow Chukwu Okabiyama to be the referee. That is what we must do. Chukwu Okabiyama have given us a divine mandate. We must play our own role. If you are a Biafran and you refuse to play your own role, watch out. Just watch out. You might be another victim of Hassan Masaka. If you are a Biafran, I say it and I say it again. History is about to repeat itself. If care is not taken already, you see people playing to the gallery. You see people pretending not to know what is going on. You see people pretending. Some of the people who are Biafrans, you see them projecting another agenda instead of the freedom of Biafran people. Even when they know that 99% of Biafran people, all they are asking for is for their freedom. Deep down in their heart, including those who claim to be one Nigeria who are talking for election, they go down to their heart. They are only afraid of the unknown. That is why you see them talking about the election and Peter Wood. The fear of the unknown. Some of them are scared because they feel that when Biafra comes, they will be irrelevant. They are scared that in Biafra, you cannot be fraudulent. Their fraudulent activities and businesses cannot flourish anymore. That is why they are scared. They are scared. But are we going to stop because of them? Of course, we cannot stop. It is essential for us to do what we are doing to save the life of Biafran people. Why I am talking on daily basis is to sensitize my fellow Biafrans to pay attention to the time that we are in. You must pay attention. Take every information serious. Every information you get from the autopiloted IPOB, autopiloted by Chukwu Kukabiyama, under the spokesmanship of Master Simon Eber on the leadership of Mazen Nandika. Whatever information you hear from them, take it serious. Don't take it for a joke. Allow those who want to take us for a ride. Let them continue. They are going to sleep in Nigeria and wake up in Biafra. And then, Shukur Kabea will decide who is going to be in and who is going to be out. And I pray that they will have another opportunity given to them by Shukur Kabea to leave and see Biafra come. But as for us, we can't be the judge. Only Shukur Kabea can be the judge. Only him be the judge. All we are doing is to pursue the assignment he has given us. Follow our divine mandate. And that is where we are heading to. We are doing what we are doing because it's a question of, it's a matter of life and death. The killing of their friends has started since 1945, unabated up to today. We are still losing men. We are still losing people. And people who are supposed to talk on your behalf and on our behalf, they are doing nothing. They are sitting on the fence. They are trying to play good men. And they forgot that the people who played to be good men in the past, every one of them lived to regret it. Every Biafran that have refused to pursue the agenda his own people have regretted it from history up to today. But they allow history to repeat itself. A full any man will come out and say that if you do not Pursue, if you don't pursue his own agenda, that he's going to support you. Somebody from Urudua land will come out and pursue his own people's agenda. Things that will favor his own people. But when you come to Biafra land, the politicians are pursuing the agenda of the caliphate. Instead of pursuing their own agenda, the agenda of their people, they will not. They will not. The Arewa people will come out and say openly 
that if you do not have, if they don't, they, they, that they, if you don't have their interest at heart, the other one will say, if you don't have their interest at heart, they will not join you, neither will they support you, whatever you're doing. If you don't have their interest, they will not support you. Or do what people the same thing. If you, they are pursuing their own interests, but when you come to the Biafra land, the people who are supposed to protect your interests are busy pursuing the interest of the British and the interest of the Caliphate. That is why you see them very confused. Even in the midst of the so tall Igbo presidency, every single one of them is mad. Go and look at them. People who have been shouting and talking about Igbo presidency today, majority of them are not even supporting their Igbo president. They are not even supporting their brother. That is not our business, in as much as we know that we cannot be able to get anything reasonable from anything called a political solution. Any politics in Nigeria is a fraud. Any politics in Nigeria is a fraud because you cannot build something on nothing. When the foundation is destroyed, there's nothing the righteous can do. When the foundation is faulty, there is no amount of beautiful things you put on top that can stand. If you want to have a good nation, you must, first of all, build a foundation. When you have a strong foundation, then you can build any beautiful edifice on, the, on top of it, and then it will stand. But when your foundation is faulty, when you have a faulty foundation, there is no amount of money you spend to put a beautiful object on top that can stand. It will not stop. All you need is just a breeze, and it will fall off. It will fall off, no matter the amount you spend. No matter the amount you spend to build on a faulty foundation, it will be destroyed. Just a breeze. Once the breeze blows, it's going to destroy. You see why Biafras don't want to be part of this faulty foundation. You see why Biafras are bent on moving away from this Georgia Republic. You see why we are asking for the total disintegration of that Zodiac Republic. It is not just for the Biafra, for the benefit of everybody. For the benefit of every indigenous tribe in the Zodiac Republic. It is for your benefit. For you to have a better life, for you to have a nation you can call it own, for you to grow at your own speed and in your own space, for you to manage your own affairs, for you to be alive. That is why Bia France are shouting on different platforms. And we will continue. It doesn't matter what anybody is saying. Already we know that there are so, so many saboteurs. Today, even people who are supposed to be standing with Mazen Nandekam are standing against him. I saw a video where somebody who claimed to be an agitator, I won't call him name because he doesn't deserve his name mentioned on my platform. None of them deserve their name to be mentioned on my platform. That's why I don't mention their name. I bumped into the video where somebody was actually defending the military, making a video defending the military in Biafra land, crying out for the military. Why, the, why was the military be attacked? Why must people talk against the military in Nigeria? Why must we talk about the police? Somebody who is an agitator, somebody who you say is a freedom fighter. Ask him, from whom are you fighting your freedom from? Who is he fighting the freedom from? You want you're a freedom fighter, an agitator. Who are you fighting your freedom from? From who? From who? If you are now promoting the military and the police and supporting them, why must they be attacked? And you say you are from whom are you fighting the freedom from? When you know that this military and the police are the instruments of oppression. They are the instruments of oppression. These are the instruments of oppression of Biafran people. Today, this same military and police have, have become a, a total instrument in the hand of the enemy. They are not even on the, It doesn't matter their tribe. It doesn't matter their religion. It doesn't matter who they, these are instruments that the British have put in place to subdue the indigenous people and make sure that they remain in slavery. The instrument that they used to promote their slavery is their military and their police. And you call yourself an agitator, a freedom fighter, yet you are making a case for the people who are oppressing you. You are making a case for them. But when your own brother is killed, you will not say what. Well. You were there when the military invaded Biafra land. You see how Biafra land is militarized. The way Biafra land is militarized is not the way they militarize Kaduna State. In Kaduna State, where the terrorists have taken up zones, where terrorists are in charge of villages, where terrorists administer laws, where terrorists catch criminals and give to them, where terrorists are collecting tax, where terrorists have their own base and they hold meetings, 
Do you see military in that in Kaduna State in that form? Did you see military in Kaduna State or in that form? Yet in Biafra land, where you have people who are asking for their rights, self-determination, a right supported by international law, supported by African Jihad law, supported by Nigerian law itself, self-determination, yet they are being killed because they are asking for self-determination. You don't see anything wrong in it. You never come out to shout and demand that the military should move out of Biafra land. But all you come to do is to make a case for your oppressor. You came to make a case for your oppressor. You have the guts to make a video and begin to castigate Biafrans, castigate your brothers who are fighting to liberate themselves from the hand of the oppressor. The instrument that the Zoological Republic is using, what instrument are you using against you? Biafrans have continued to lose their life. We have lost so many Biafran lives. Continue to lose up to today. But you see people who claim to be agitators, they go to their platform, they begin to blackmail their fellow Biafrans. They begin to blackmail their fellow. Even when the even when the caliphate are silent, they begin to look at the attack, the attack on, 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 on what they call it, Bifan Yoba. The attack. That idiot was saying that was insinuating that the attack was done by Biafrans. <laughs> it's so sad. But it is good. It's good that when things are happening, you begin to see. That's why I say any Biafran today that say he doesn't know where to follow, he doesn't know who is standing for the truth, you are a deceiver and you're worse than the devil. If you are a Biafran at this particular point in time, you say you don't know who to follow, you don't know where to go, you are worse than the devil. You don't deserve to be a Biafran. But are we going to stop? Of course we can't stop because we know what we're fighting for. We know what about these saboteurs are part of the problem that we want to liberate Biafra from. So many Biafrans have been contaminated with the ginger weed brain. So many Biafrans have been contaminated. They can no longer take decision for themselves. When they speak, you'll be wondering, is this person a Biafran? You'll be wondering. This is what we see. And this is why we must fight by all means to get out of the Zoological Republic. And now, before we proceed, I'm going to play. The message directly from Mazen Nandikan so that you can hear. Maybe when they begin to hear directly from Mazen Nandikan, they might stop talking all those trash they're talking. You will hear directly from Mazen Nandikan what he has to say about the instruments of the enemy against the Biafrans. This same military that an idiot was defending, the zoological military and police, which you know that have already become Boko Haram. You were there when Boko Haram members were given uniform and recruited into the military and all their mission was to destroy Biafra. You were there, you saw it, you did nothing. You didn't speak about it, you attack it all of a sudden. You woke up and you were coming against your own people. I'm gonna play that video, extract from more than passing that they can. Maybe hearing him might make you be more reasonable. Let's hear from Mazen Nandikan what he has to say. Who are we? <laughs> and the children of light the children of light. That's something I want to play for you. That is something that I wish to play for you that the whole world may understand it. To know who we are. To know why we are agitating for Biafra. To tell the so-called misguided foolish elders that cannot see, that are not learned, to let them understand why we do what we do. They know nothing. That is why we are the way we are. They know nothing. I want to show you something. Listen. The international community can be brought to bear. The UN. Um, Listen. Of human rights all the way through. This is a very. No. It has got. It has. Oh my goodness. It has gone. I will try to play it from here. Try to play it. From off TV. Listen. That, uh, we believe that there's a possibility that the international community can be brought to bear. The UN. Listen. Um, the Declaration of Human Rights, all the way through. This is a very, very serious matter. There's something that I a didn't white man. and I hesitate. A white man. A white I'm man. I'm not Nigerian, although I think uh, Dr. Lloyd has bestowed upon me the honorary title of Nigeria man. <laughs> and he was, we had a conversation. It wasn't heated, but he, he acted like he was going to revoke my Nigeria man credentials. Listen. <laughs> causing my 13-year-old son, who was in the car with me, to be very distraught. I said, Dad, you have to stay a Nigeria man. Um, 
But talking about children, when I was a little boy, mm -hmm. when I was seven years old, growing up in the middle of nowhere, Florida, in a swamp, closest town was 30 miles away. Mm -hmm. The first thing that happened in the world that brought to bear to me that maybe things weren't always right, maybe yes. things weren't always good, was not the Vietnam War. Vietnam War. I was in the South. It was correct and just. And we were the warriors. Mm -hmm. It was the Biafra War. Biafra. Listen. I remember very distinctly thinking, this just isn't right. This isn't right. The British. This is a great right nation. It is a great nation. It's a great nation. Biafra. Great country. And then later when I learned, something most people don't know, mm -hmm. that there is a plausible argument that democracy began in Igbo land. Igbo land, a white man, democracy, the world knows today started in Igbo land. The, the whole world over. A white man, an American, an American doing his research. I don't know who has this clip, but I want to post it on my page. Democracy started where in Igbo land. Now, do you see the reason why I tell that we are the most, the oldest people on this earth? And if you don't have the grace of God, you cannot write. You cannot read and write. A white man doing research in America. This is what. This is why CNN will not carry our news. If you're wondering why BBC won't carry, this is it. Because the white man understands what Biafra means. Blacks in Africa don't know. They don't know the purpose of God in their lives. They have no idea. You see, the Yoruba see Biafra as um, something there to be fought. Let's fight it. They are fighting Biafra out of ignorance. This man did his research and said what our ancestors were able to do 5,000 years ago now today we cannot do it the first written constitution in the whole world Igbo land the first organized government in the world Igbo land the first, the only, there are two people that God controlled from heaven the Israelites and those that he sent to Biafra land. Only two. The Israelites revolt, revolted and said, give us a king so we can be like other nations. And took a card and gave them Saul. Do you know the funniest thing? The Igbo race never asked for a king. Instead, they named their children children that are called this king. That is why if you come out in, in Biafra land in those days, I say Iboland as an example because they're the ones maintaining it. And you say to somebody you're a king, they'll tell you to go and be a king to your wife and your children. Now you understand how special we are. Now you understand why I fight for Biafra to be free. And I want my Yoruba brethren to understand once Biafra is free, you're also very free. You'll be very rich. I assure you. Because it's a blessing from God in heaven, not man. And this is what the British never wanted you to know. They don't want you to know this, never. Because they, they want us to be saying it. And being a black man from Africa, if you're saying it, people won't believe you. The British saw this. That was why they said we must amalgamate them. They found a number of Ziki, and the Ziki was a willing tool of the devil. And he agreed. Mazen Bono Jike warned him. He said, No. I'll play it again so you hear how special you are. I want you to understand how special. Some of you don't know why we fight for Biafra. This is the reason why. We are the oldest of the oldest, the very ancient people. When I tell you that Igbo language is world that's speaking in heaven, you're doubting me. That is what they speak in heaven. The angels address God Almighty in Igbo language. This is the reason why the oldest civilization on this earth is Igbo land, the center of the whole world. Let's listen to this man once again. I'm, I'm I hope you have heard from Martin Andika. His messages are always gospel. All you need to know is to pay attention.
quiet to wake up from your slumber or your sleep and get the point that we are exiting Nigeria. Exiting Nigeria is not going to come from the platter of Godi plate. You have to sacrifice for it. And we are ready to sacrifice everything, including you. If you come and stand in the way of freedom. So you need to know how serious we are. We are damn serious. Some of you are not getting it. You think we are here to, to make to build political movement? We are here for freedom. Freedom come with price. Okay? The only thing you can do is to comment on social media. Don't ever stand on the way of Biafra freedom. We crush you. Their interest is suppressed. Biafra is the key. Once they can hold Biafra down, they can hold all of Africa down. <laughs> Hey, freedom fighting, sorry. Because all these people are criminals, they are saying there is no way this man cannot be a criminal like themselves. They don't have a different breed altogether. They don't know that. I am an Nam Kano. I don't do all this nonsense you do. My father was a very rich man, not ostentatious. I had the finest education that his money could afford. We are not poor. Have never been. That is why a poor man cannot be a freedom fighter. If you are not full of yourself, you cannot be a freedom fighter. <laughs> we must continue.